His contemporaries often called him the prodigal son of Dutch painting, as he valued his independence so much that he preferred to bear with all hardships and the contempt of his compatriots instead of giving up his ideas of painting to please his customers. Thousands of books have been written about this genius painter, but according to the writer Eugene Fromentin, there are many shadows and dark sides both in the life of Rembrandt von Rijn and in his paintings. Rembrandt Harmon Zoon von Rijn was born in 1606 into the family of a rich miller. Having finished Latin school, he entered Leiden University, but he left his studies a year later for the sake of painting. After spending three years in Amsterdam, where he served his apprenticeship with Lastman, a painter and engraver, the young painter returned to his home. He opened a studio together with his friend Jan Lievens. All of the Leiden period pictures can be called a masterpiece, and each of them depicted biblical themes. They appealed to all not only by the colors, but also by the deep psychological insight which was unusual for art at that time. But in the quiet provincial town of Leiden, only few people were able to appreciate the talent of the young painter. So, in 1631, Rembrandt left for Amsterdam, the center of artistic culture in Holland. There he opened a small shop bearing the highly distinguishable name, the Academy of Painting, and started painting portraits to order. The fame of the talented painter quickly spread around the whole city and soon Rembrandt became the most fashionable painter in Amsterdam. The number of orders increased and so did the painter's prices. The pinnacle of Rembrandt's portrayal mastery at that period was the picture The Anatomy Lesson of Dr. Nicholas Tulp, painted to the Corporation of Surgeons order. The painter received everything he dreamed of glory, wealth, and awareness of his own talent and love. In 1634, Rembrandt married the charming and cheerful girl, Saskia van Uhlenberg. The young wife became his model. The enamored painter dressed Saskia in magnificent garments depicted her as a goddess in his pictures, but he never revealed her nudity, as if protecting her from strangers' glances. But when Rembrandt seemed to reach the peak of his fame, happiness abandoned him. Saskia, his only beautiful love, died of tuberculosis and left him with a live spitting image of herself, their son Titus. The painter gave up painting and refused to receive any guests or orders. His only consolation was Titus, who was brought up by Gertia Dirks, the foster mother and later Titus's nursery governess. Gertia became the painter's sweetheart and an absolute hostess in his house. But when Rembrandt took a fancy to a young maidservant, Henrikia, she appealed to the court accusing the painter of breaking his promise to marry her. The court's verdict for Rembrandt was to pay Gertia 200 goldens a year, a huge amount of money at that time. That was how the most difficult period in the life of the painter began. The painter's talent and his mastery had reached its peak at that time. But the taste of the customers had changed. Frivolous genre scenes became more popular. But the stubborn painter persisted in refusing to paint pictures he disliked, but which his customers liked. He asserted, I was born Rembrandt and I'll die Rembrandt. The customers more frequently prefer to address not the obstinate master, but his more compliant apprentices. At that time, the artist spent a lot of time etching. He created real masterpieces of graphic art. The Mill, Christ Healing the Sick, The Three Crosses, and Six's Bridge. But the artist wasn't able to improve his financial situation, and in 1657, he was declared bankrupt. Even the sale of his property could not save Rembrandt. He was forced to move to a small house in the poor town's district. In pictures painted during his last days, dark colors prevail. He painted, for himself, the pictures that today are considered to be the most mature creations of the master. 
Asuras, Haman and Esther, the Apostle Peter denies Christ and the Jewish Bride. He was still haunted by misfortune. In 1663, Hendrikia died. Five years later, his beloved son Titus faded away due to tuberculosis. The lonely, sick and forgotten artist was left alone with his canvases. Shortly before his death, he painted his self-portrait and the staggering The Return of the Prodigal Son. His almost mendicant existence undermined his physical and emotional state of mind. On October 4, 1669, Rembrandt passed away, but the death of the greatest Dutch artist went unnoticed. Rembrandt's art, forgotten by his contemporaries, was appreciated by his descendants. Master, the only one both in his own country and in all countries, at his time and at all other times. These were the words said about Rembrandt by his biographer, Eugene Fromentin.